Alright, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, our lesson here, uh, the study of psychology. So we're going to talk uh, a little bit today about um, the purpose of psychology, how psychology works, and a little bit of an introduction to the kind of foundations of psychology. So our objectives and standards are to recognize the goals of psychology and to analyze the reasons to study psychology. And take a moment there to read the standards, please. <clears throat> and our desired result, why study psychology? So what is the purpose of psychology? What are psychologists and others in the field trying to understand through psychology? So that's kind of our focus there. Some vocabulary. Uh, physiological is relating to an organism's physical processes, such as your breathing, your heartbeat, uh, those types of things. Cognitive is relating to an organism's thinking and understanding, such as why do we become upset at a movie or at a certain event, or why do we laugh at a joke, uh, those types of things. Psychology is the scientific study of behavior that is tested by scientific research, and a hypothesis is an assumption or prediction about behavior that is tested through research. A little more vocabulary here. Uh, a theory is assumptions used to explain a phenomena. Basic science is gaining knowledge about a natural phenomena for its own purpose. Applied science is a little different, discovering the ways to use scientific findings to accomplish goals. And then the scientific method you may have heard of before is a way to gather information and answers to limit errors and bias. So a brief introduction to this. Psychology is the scientific study of mental and biological processes. And again, understanding why we laugh, we cry, uh, understanding why we may react or get angry at people if they do something to us or say something to us. Um, so it's what and how people and animals think, act, and do. And that's why I put that kind of question mark with the, uh, with the head there to kind of say, okay, you know, we're trying to understand all these different processes and uh, all these different actions. <clears throat> there are four goals of psychologists. Description. A scientist or psychologist will seek to describe or gather information about the behavior that is being studied at that time. So let's say a person, a psychologist or a scientist is seeking to understand why a person may um, not like horses or might not like going in the ocean, for example. Um, they're going to try to understand that behavior. <coughs> Psychologists will then propose hypotheses about a possible reason for that behavior. Maybe somebody uh, had a negative experience in the ocean as a child. Maybe somebody, um, you know, got kind of, hopefully not, but maybe got thrown off a horse as a child and doesn't like horses. Or, you know, maybe had a nightmare about a horse as a child and so they don't like horses. Um, and sometimes there can be multiple explanations that can result in a theory. So again, first two here, description and explanation. The next two are prediction and influence. So number three, prediction, uh, psych psych psychologists, excuse me, will then use the knowledge that they have gained to predict what living organisms such as humans will think or feel in different scenarios, such as if we put that person who's afraid of the ocean in the ocean, or maybe we show them a picture of the ocean or a movie with the ocean, how are they going to react? Are they going to freak out and cry and run away? Or are they going to stay relatively calm until maybe, you know, something upsets them later on? Um, so psychologists try to predict how that person might react. Maybe they're fine seeing a movie about the ocean, um, but they're not okay being in the ocean. So again, different behaviors and understanding what a person's thinking might be. And then influence. Some psychologists may seek to influence the behavior in a positive way. Um, maybe they try to help that person get over the fear. Maybe they try to put that person in the situation so they won't be fearful of the ocean or of horses anymore. Um, and they are hoping to find out more about uh, an animal or human behavior through basic or applied science. So the science of psychology. Psychologists rely on the scientific method to help collect data, and this means that they identify a problem or a question, they then form a hypothesis, they collect data through observations and experiments, and then they analyze that data. So here's a kind of another example of the scientific method here, a little bit different from what I just described. But again, you know, we use this and we see this in science, biology, chemistry, all types of sciences. 
Um, and again, the scientific process of psychology goes back many years, and it has also changed over time as well. So Wundt and psychology. The first psychological lab is credited to William Wundt. You can see his picture down there. And it was set up in Leipzig, Germany in 1879. Now, Wundt proposed that psychological experience is made up of compounds, like in chemistry. Maybe you take in chemistry or, or take in chemistry or know a little about chemistry. But Wundt basically says that, you know, our psychological experience has different elements. And all those different elements can make something. Just like salt is made up of different elements and different compounds, uh, our psychology, our behavior, our thinking, our feelings are made up of different compounds. He also stated that psychology has two kinds of elements, sensations and feelings. So what we feel and then how we react to them, our feelings, happy, sad, angry, upset. So the works of Wundt. Wundt did attempt to test his statements, but his methods were not reliable and they were sometimes cumbersome. What that means is they were just kind of very big and just hard to kind of comprehend. However, his method of introspection uh, helped lead to the scientific method. And we'll talk later about introspection later on in the course. Um, but all you need to know right now, excuse me, is that introspection is kind of looking at yourself and your feelings and your emotions and understanding why you're feeling the way you are. Why are you feeling angry at a certain time? Why are you feeling sad, happy, um, frustrated? Um, you know, and so Wundt tries to help people understand you know, that, you know, understanding their feelings and their behaviors. And new theories and practices will also be introduced um, in the present as well, in the current times, that are helping us understand psychology still to this day. So our closure again, why study psychology? What about psychology do people try to understand? Um, what's the purpose of studying psychology? Um, that will help you answer your question. All right, so please try your best on the questions that follow. Remember to include information from this lesson in your chart as well. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day or night. Let me know of any questions or concerns, and I'll talk to you soon.